Hey guys, this is Zach Day from season 18 of The Voice. Be sure to subscribe to DNC Digital over here on YouTube. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy D from DNC Digital back with another episode of DNC Radio. My guest today is Zach Day. Zach Day is a very, very talented uh, music artist, and I'm a huge fan, and I'm really excited to talk to him. You've seen him on American Idol and The Voice, and you can see him locally in your uh, upcoming shows coming up. Zach, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Super happy to be here. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Like I said, man, uh, we spoke a little bit off camera, but your uh i didn't see you in american idol and i you know and i think you've only had the one audition and then you know it didn't really plan out pan out but uh your experience on the voice like when you came up and you sang weak and it was one of my favorite 90s r&b songs um definitely became a fan um but i do want to start uh from the beginning you are a uh, kentucky boy uh born and born and raised um yeah. so the, the one thing i do like to talk about is food i always talk about food on this podcast so i yes. would like to know sir <laughs> if we were to meet up in kentucky and you know go to a couple gigs go to a couple shows where would you take me to eat to get a oh good kentucky gosh. like i need the image of <laughs> kentucky in that plate where are you taking me uh my grandma's house probably nice, <laughs> nice. Um, she is a great cook and that is the food i love food too by the way i have a pizza tattoo on me right here if you can see <laughs> nice. i love all food um pizza is probably my favorite but when we're talking like kentucky food and the culture that raised me oh my gosh it's like biscuits and gravy fried potatoes like i don't know all that good like that breakfast food that's my favorite stuff and there's a couple places down there in my hometown that can cook okay but none of them compare to the way my grandma does it <laughs> no not like grandma i'd have to go uh we'd have to definitely make that trip oh um, yeah i have like a ton of canned food in my um like cupboard like my grandma still cans stuff from our garden like today so like so sweet. okra and corn and potatoes and all this stuff and mason jars up there so yeah i'm i'm, I'm covered for sure <laughs> that's awesome uh so born and raised in kentucky uh you have you know bluegrass and country uh kind of surrounding you but yeah. you said in past interviews that you like to fuse musical genres together you know uh you have dolly parton lauren hill amy winehouse so yeah. um what was it about those outside influences that came into your musical taste? Yeah, sure. So that's very true. I, I grew up singing in like a three-part harmony kind of folk trio vibe with like my friends and my sister. And um, so, yeah, we really grew up listening to all that kind of music that was really focused on just really good vocals. Like, like, a, like you said, Dolly Parton and the Carpenters and Mamas and the Papas and Fleetwood Mac and all these like really harmony heavy groups. That was the stuff that raised me. And so that's kind of how I learned how to sing, I think was just like emulating those artists. And then by the time I picked up the guitar and started really studying how to play guitar and how to sing as a solo artist, of course, you're going to just expand what you listen to and everything. So I started listening to everything that I could get my hands on. Lauren Hill. Yeah, I started going into the R&B vibe a little bit, like Destiny's Child, R&B. Um, yeah, Lauren Hill, all the greats, you know. And um, I was like, wow, I really love this music too. And then I was singing background vocals for like rock bands in college. And I was, sing I was doing some musical theater and I was doing some jazz vocal and black gospel ensembles. So I was just really trying to like take a little bit of everything and figure out, okay, now what can I do with with this with my own music and i'm still figuring it out but um it's been a really good i think it's better to be versatile than to just be you know one track minded in that way is is the journey you know um can, can you talk about how enjoying the journey is more important than probably getting to your destination because some people are so quick to make it or i want to be that overnight sensation how yeah. important is the time and patience when it comes to the music business yeah, that's so true. I was actually just talking with someone about this the other day because I can kind of get down. I will get down on myself sometimes because I'm like, damn, like, what am I doing? Like, I need to be out here. I should already be like, you know, on the top of my game. And then I look around and I'm like, wait, I, I am. And I'm here. I'm doing it. Like, I'm currently I just lived in rent for, like in Nashville rent free for the past year just because of music and like 
I'm doing it and I'm booked. You know what I mean? So it, it's just like, if you don't stop to look around, you're going to miss all the things that are actually happening right now. Right. But if you yeah. have these big, you know, big dreams in mind, but it is good to keep, you know, goal oriented, but yeah, I mean, you just got to take all these opportunities and that's, what's going to get you there. You know what I mean? And then, but then it's like, when you get there, are you going to be happy? Or are you going to be like, what are you going to still be looking for that next thing? That's where I'm like, I'm worried because I don't know if I'll ever be able to get what I want, you know, like I mean? professionally satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I'm, I'm always like, well, I just want to be successful. You know what I mean? And I think that's pretty relative, like to whatever you're going through. So um, I'm trying to just take a step back every day and just like, look and be like, look, you worked for this. What you're doing is working and you're doing great and keep going, <laughs> you know? So you said that you grew up singing with your sister and with your family, yeah, um, yeah. but I, I found out online that your parents divorced when you were 10. Yeah. So now is that a catalyst to throw yourself into music or was that a difficult transition because you were already singing with your sister? Yeah, no. So um, that definitely really helped me to start figuring out, okay, I want to do something to maybe like distract me from that. Um, Cause like, yeah, after that, I, I kind of grew up, I mean, I grew up in a very, very small town in Kentucky, a very like um, poor area of the state. And um, I have a lot of love for it, of course, but it's just not easy being me, being who, you, who you, oh, I am in right. that kind of area. Um, and then going through that was really tough too. So uh, I really started skipping school a lot, <laughs> which is bad. And I would... Um, I would start singing with like my sister was actually my sister really didn't come into the picture until a little bit later. She gotcha. always could sing, okay. but we were like, come, we would have to like beg her to sing. And then one day she just like popped off and started harmonizing with us. And we were like, what, where did this come from? Like we knew she could do it and she's amazing. Um, but it was actually like my two best friends in school and I would go stay with them like every night and we would like miss the bus on accident, you know, and then we would like stay home and pick up the guitar and teach each other how to play songs. And then my parents were kind of just like, I mean, they were pissed at me because I wasn't going to school, mm -hmm. but I was just like, well, I mean, I'm over here. We're, we're, we're good. We're being good. Like it's, we could have been doing so many other things like partying or whatever, but we weren't, we were like 15, 16 picking up the guitar and just like really honing our skills we're like damn we we're good like we've got something and I think that's that's what how I learned to sing too is just like yeah focusing on these these harmonies and what we could do to make each other sound good you know um so back back then it may have been different going through the struggles that you mentioned um yeah. when you were a young kid in a very it seems traditional area of uh Kentucky yeah. um so back then, you know, without social media, without uh, a larger platform for yeah. strangers to hurt your feelings, like <laughs> what kind of advice would you have for somebody today that feels like maybe they don't have anybody to go to or everybody surrounding them is just, you know, making them feel bad about themselves? What can yeah. you say to that kid? You know, I'm so glad that there are things like TV and, um, social media and things like that now it seems like it's a lot easier for um for kids these days that are that are struggling with that kind of stuff to find an outlet for sure um so for me I didn't have that really social media I mean honestly like when I got to be in like maybe late middle school early high school YouTube was just popping off so I was able okay, to okay. find it was easy for me to kind of find at least something that I could like see myself in you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I would watch these youtubers and be like oh i can see myself in that a little bit but honestly i was raised on watching like really trashy reality tv <laughs> and that is like something that i could relate to too i was just like oh my god i just feel like something i don't know i would just say look for something that makes you happy and really let's like lean into it don't be embarrassed about like looking like um a geek or something like geek out over it like if i think about like i can tell you every season of survivor like all the winners i can tell you like everything about like america's next top model like all these shows because like that was just something that i could really focus on and like really not think too much about how different i was or how like weird i was in school but it's it's definitely easy to get caught up in that and just like I think I was also lucky that I had some really, really good friends and people that I could really, really trust. So I would just say like, 
I hope that you can find some people in your life that you can turn to friends and family that um, you really trust. And they're there. They're, they're, you do have people that will like embrace you for who you are and, and be right there beside you for sure. Definitely. I feel like maybe there are, you know, there are some small darker corners of this country where people aren't, ex- aren't, uh, aren't accepted as, as much as other yeah. parts of the country. So sure. um, my question to you would be, you know, commercially at a national level, maybe, and, and definitely commercially, I feel like different uh, backgrounds are accepted a lot more than, you know, even 10 years ago. Totally. What would you, what would you credit the evolution of that to? Because, you know, now people from different sexual orientations or different backgrounds, different religions, it's a much more open conversation. What do you think allowed us to evolve to this day now? I think it's just people pushing boundaries. And luckily, we have we do have figures that have done that for us. There are mm-hmm. people who have gone through like a lot of stuff that it just takes a lot of bravery and courage to do something like that. But at the end of the day, it does open people's minds. So like we have to give it up to the people who have been doing this for years. I mean, like the older generation, the generation before me that have had to go through ridicule and all this stuff just for being who they are has made it possible for us to be more accepted today, I think. Um, and luckily we have a lot of proof of it from TV and, and culture like that, internet and stuff like that, luckily. Um, have, but a funny uh... story is like, I actually, before I did The Voice, I hadn't come out to my family as gay um, okay it was it was that was a journey for me I, I had told my friends and stuff and like I wasn't like closed off about it but I was not really I didn't talk to my family about that stuff I still don't really talk to them about my personal life in that way but I, I um I had I went to my first audition for the voice and I had like long curly hair and I had like my fingernails painted I had my you looked great pierced. by the way man <laughs> you looked you. great that was a vibe yeah, such a cool like <laughs> outfit like I, what yeah. you had like a you had like a blazer with a button yeah. up and a regular t-shirt under you yeah. looked awesome man <laughs> thank you that was that's you know there's many auditions before that one but that they helped me get a little look together for that but nice. the original audition I did show up in a similar vibe you know I had I was just like here I am and I was like I told them I was like yeah I'm like this um this queer artist from Kentucky that grew up on a farm and I'm just like rock and roll baby like Gwen Stefani is the one I want to work with and then she wasn't even a coach on my season but um no and they were like oh we love that and I was like yeah my friends called me like Gacy Musgraves or Gaylor Swift and I was like me and my sister and my friend we're like Destiny's Child but make it redneck or whatever and so like of course they like loved that and then as you get further and further along they're like oh by the way like we're gonna like we want to bring your mom out here and we want to ask her about like what it was like to raise like a gay son in the middle of Kentucky or whatever. And I was just like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I need to like have a conversation with her about that probably first. So uh, to be 100% honest, that was the first time I'd ever talked to my family about, um, about being gay or whatever. And And, and, and um, if if you, you know, if, if you allow me to ask what was your mother's um, response to that conversation? so I texted my mom and dad in separate <laughs> text messages and I was just like so you guys know I'm doing the show and I was like they really want to know what it's like and I explained it and then I was like and I was sitting there with my roommate and I was like okay like we'll just see like what they say and I was so nervous and sick to my stomach and I, she's like it's fine it'll be fine and luckily they were both just like okay my dad was like love you you know super happy for you and then my mom was like the same and then she was like have you told your grandparents yet? And I was like, no, <laughs> I was like, you can, if you want, I was like, if they watch it on TV and they have any questions, just send them to me. And she was like, okay. <laughs> so like, it was a little awkward, but um, I'm so lucky. Like, I mean, you said it, like there's so many other art areas and people and places that like don't accept you for who you are. And I'm just very, very lucky that my family has really become a little bit more open-minded in their like older age somehow. Yeah, but- no, I, I, I'm interested in that because I, I would never experience anything like that, like that yeah. suspense or that anticipation yeah. for somebody who you really hold at a high regard, obviously your parents. And yeah, how fortunate do you feel that it was a good result rather than, you know, I see videos of some women and men going to pride, uh, pride parades. They have the, 
free dad hugs or free mom yes, hugs. Sure. Yeah. And they represent a, a you know an empty figure now. How yeah. fortunate do you feel that it was it was just a good conversation with your parents? I'm just lucky. Like I'm just very lucky. And like it could have been worse. And I remember growing up, I mean I've I've always known, but I just like didn't feel comfortable talking about it. But like it's just it's just such a different world. I mean that is just such a crazy conversation because it can go so deep. You know what I mean? Like No, yeah, definitely. And it's um I'm just very lucky, lucky to have just good, good people in my life. And like, well, not a lot of people have that. And as, but like I said earlier, it's like, you have to be able to find people in your life that love you and care about you. And they're there and you will find it. It's just like, I'm lucky that I had really good friends that accepted me for who I was. And then my family, they came along eventually, you know what I mean? And we still don't really talk about it. I mean, it, I mean, just, it, it's not, it, I don't think like it should be a topic of conversation. Yeah. It's just. You just that's how happen. I always thought. To, yeah, that that's it. And yeah. I mean, if we can wrap, I mean, that's fine. Sure. We'll just wrap up that that little <laughs> part. But yeah, the outside looking in is just a different perspective. If we can help anybody, yeah, as an openly gay man, what do you think is the issue for that community that maybe hasn't been addressed yet? Um, I would just say that you know everyone's out here with good intentions, and we all just like have our hearts set on us being happy and finding peace. And so it's just like, I hope that we can continue to just open our minds and our hearts and just like stay positive and just focus on yourself and what your goals are. And if you go, if you got your friends and family around you and you love them and embrace them, then good, good for you. And hopefully everyone will uh, return the favor for sure. It's just like you said in the tweet, it's just all about love. It's all about love. It's yeah. all about love. It's so easy. Like it's, it's easy. Like it, I, I feel I've become a very, very Zen person the past few years. And I just feel like it's just easy. Like I, I put mm. out a, and we're going to talk about your TikTok too, but I put out a TikTok <laughs> um, the other day when, cause I saw a post on Twitter. Like I can't wait for my haters to see me when I make it, or I can't mm. wait to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, why are we worried about proving them wrong instead yeah. of proving them right? You know, you got your exactly. supporters. And I I would feel that I have like I don't know 600 subscribers on my YouTube channel and yeah and uh, consider that a show that I'm putting on that 600 people have bought a ticket to why would I worry about why would I worry about the people that haven't even bought a ticket I would make my audience feel like crap because I'm worried about I I, I don't yeah. get it like, it's no. all about positivity to me it's all about love I genuinely hope everybody does good. If, yeah. if if nothing works out we got nothing to talk about but i would still say god bless you good luck i still got love for you absolutely you just yeah that's what it's all about is just like focusing on on what you got to do to better yourself don't be chasing like uh, you know approval from people who don't even care focus on your art <laughs> focus on exactly. your craft and like getting better just get better <laughs> um so um i saw a tweet that um just made me laugh out loud for some reason but you put randomly in Miami now. So tell me about the benefits of traveling as a musician and just getting into these stories that you'll be able to tell your grandkids. Yeah, that's so funny. I'm first of all, sorry that you're seeing my tweets. That is literally. Like I went, no, hey, Zach, I went deep. I went oh, deep Jesus. into your tweets, bro. I do my research. <laughs> well, I'm. I'm hoping that they make you laugh. Um, no, they're they genuinely did, they did. just like supposed to be me being funny. Um, I try, but um, no, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the other day I have a friend that was on The Voice as well and we went to college together. Her name's Mackenzie. She's like huge on TikTok and Instagram and stuff. And she was like, on The Voice too? Yeah, a couple seasons before me. I did not know that. She mm -hmm. is amazing. She's the first dope. time I saw her was... Um, she looked like she was just laying down, but yeah. she decided to belt out this Ariana Grande <laughs> song. Yeah. And uh, oh man, my girlfriend knows this the song. I, I don't know it, but yeah. she was just doing these runs and like that girl's insane. Insane. Sure. I'm sorry, go ahead though. No, she is like, and it's so crazy. So we go way back and we have the same mentor and um, we have the same, we went to school together. So it's like really weird that we've kind of reconnected now, but like we went way back and then um, she did the voice and got really far. And then a couple, and I was just like, the voice like contacted me about coming. And I was like, I don't want to do it. And I was like, okay, well, my friend Mackenzie did it and she got really far. And now look at her, she's like doing all this stuff. And I was like, 
if she can do it, I can do it. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. So I, I auditioned too. And anyway, that, that was really one of the driving factors for me doing the show. But um, anyway, she is, you know, we stay in touch. And then the other day she was like, I have this show in Knoxville. Would you want to come play for me, play guitar and sing backs? And I was like, yeah. So I drove to Knoxville, played, played for her. It was just me and her, an acoustic set. And it went really well. And then she was like, okay, well, you're playing guitar for me now. So then like a couple of days later, she flew me to Miami and I played a show for her there. And yeah, and now I'm just kind of playing for her anytime she needs me. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. Yeah, it's, uh, been, so, it's been a trip. <laughs> so before The Voice, you did um, American Idol. So my, my question yeah. to you is that, it feels like they're both the upper echelons when it comes to singing competitions on TV. Yeah. You know, results of winners may be different, but, you know, they, I feel like they're the top two. I what are so. the differences between those two shows in terms of production and your experience in there? Oh, it was totally different. Well, um, when I did American Idol, I think I was like 18 or 19. And when I did American Idol, I had just, I had um, went to Disney World on vacation with my friends and I did the, they don't even have it anymore, but they had this thing called like the idol experience or something like that at okay. Disney world. And it was like, you do like an audition for like a producer. And then you like, it's like a day, it's like a full competition of American idol, but condensed down to one day. And you go up against like, if you make it, you spend the whole day there. And then at the end of the night, you compete against like four other people. So there's like five of you and you do like a song for a live audience and then they vote. And I won. And then um, if you win, you get like a golden ticket to be like, you get to audition for the real American Idol and you get to be oh, first wow. in line okay. or whatever. So yeah. I was like, okay, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll go to this. And I got my golden ticket. And then so that was the start of the process for me. I was first in line that day at the big audition and went and made it. And then, I don't know, it was just like, the, this, the process is similar, like, there's a lot more that you don't see. To right, be right. And um, it was, uh, but it was still really fun. I was just so young at the time. And like, I really didn't know how to play guitar yet. And I like really didn't know what I was doing yet. So I did, I made it to Hollywood. I got all yeses from the judges, which was mm -hmm. really cool. And it was Jennifer Lopez, Keith Urban and Harry Connick Jr. And they were really cool, really sweet. And then I got cut like the second round in Hollywood or something. But yeah, I mean, my audition is on is on YouTube somewhere, but it's like buried in some sort of compilation. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't find it. I, yeah. I, I saw your your road to Hollywood little yeah. thing, but I wasn't able to road find it. You did Amy Winehouse or something, right? Yeah. OK, so, yeah, I did for like that's the one they showed um, was me right. and Amy Winehouse. But I also did like an original song. And it was like, yes, yeah. it's because you, okay, I want to get to that because <laughs> yeah. you worked as a tram driver for yep. Disney. Yep. And um, so, so the story <laughs> is that there are like safety rules. Uh, you're yes. kind of like the flight attendant who stands there and, and talks about the vest and, and the exits and stuff. So yep. you made a, an original song yep. uh, about that. And I guess it made you popular and they had you <laughs> sing it for them. Too bad it ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. My dude. question about that job <laughs> is more, more, more like the original song sounds cool, but yeah. I want to know like <laughs> the innings of that place. I want to know like the the craziest family vacation story you've seen in front of you. Oh, you got to give me one. You got to. <laughs> that was honestly a trip. Oh yeah, um, the cra some of the craziest ones where people would come up to me and be like where's harry potter world and i would be like baby that's universal that's like a different <laughs> franchise like <laughs> that's not disney they're like but where is hogwarts i'm like you gotta exit the park <laughs> and go down the road <laughs> um and then they would come just speaking spanish to me just just come up to me just start speaking spanish and i'm just like sorry it's, i don't speak <laughs> yeah like, no nintendo i'm sorry yeah exactly <laughs> so um that was a f oh did you know that there's there are secret tunnels under magic kingdom that's real secret is, is that for the for the cast for the employees yeah yeah and is that more so like a, a timing thing like to get you to a it's certain like, position quicker yeah yeah and it's also because magic was well, so i worked at animal kingdom and i loved it like that's where i did the trans stuff with animal kingdom it was awesome <laughs> um 
and I would go like, I would take the train, I would go in and do the safari every day. And there was like this little um, giraffe there named Mosey and he was a newborn and I would go see him all the time. But he died. I found out he died the other day. Cause I was Poor like, thinking about Oh, the him. other day, this is bad time. Well, he, he, died. <laughs> <laughs> he died a couple years ago, but I only found out that oh, he you died. Only, oh, so recently. you're still mourning. About... And I was like, what the heck? Like, how does that happen? I don't know even how it happened, but um, yeah, that was weird. But um, I'm just like, something went on, something was going on there. But um, yeah, no, but basically Magic Kingdom's so big that like, they don't want someone walking around in like Space Mountain or like in that area dressed as like Frontierland. Gotcha. Outfit, you know what I mean? Like they want to keep the, the fantasy. So like- did you, did you get any access to how maybe meticulous the process is to being a princess in-, in- Oh yeah. No, I have friends that like do, that are like, First of all, you're not being a princess, you're friends with them because there's only one. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. <laughs> so if you are friends with Cinderella, you're friends with Cinderella. You know what I'm saying? But you're breaking all these little hearts. They're thinking they're meeting Cinderella. You have to say they you're are. a friend. No, like, no, like, so my, my friend Annie, she was friends with Cinderella, Rapunzel, Elsa, gotcha. Snow White. She was friends with all of them. You know what I mean? And Sweet. so, like, okay. you could go see her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, she would like do, she actually got picked up to go to like Hong Kong and, you know, be friends with the princesses over there. Well, damn. But it's, it's a lot. I mean, they want you to look, they want you to be like a certain height, a certain weight, I think. Like they want your face to be like versatile so that you can look like multiple different, you know, princesses or whatever. It's, it's a lot. I was like, I did not do the entertainment down there. I made up my own song and did my own entertainment on the tram. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was everybody's response to that song when you did it on your American Idol audition? Oh, oh, they loved it. Like, first of all, all the judges were like, that's the best original song we've heard all season. That's what they <laughs> said. And I was like, thank you. And then they're like, what else you got? And I did the Amy Winehouse or whatever. I actually did Hey Ya too by Outkast and played my guitar. And that oh, that sounds it. cool. Yeah, but I like fucked up. the. Sorry, I like messed up the chords or whatever. Oh, no, it's okay. And... <laughs> we're, we're good. Don't worry about it. I, I don't like to do chords. a lot of editing, so we just curse it up. It's <laughs> <Okay. fine. laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll be careful. But yeah, I, I messed up the chords or something. And I was like so nervous playing it. And it's like, okay, play something else, play something else. And so I did the Amy Winehouse and that yeah that worked that's cool man no that, that's cool once i saw that you were like it worked for disney i'm like i gotta know the secrets i got i yeah, gotta hear it there's wild. probably there's probably a ton more stuff that we we can we can talk about oh and, i got to ride space mountain with all the lights on which was really cool you don't oh, really that's, to do that very much no yeah. no definitely it yeah. was like the park was closed and sometimes they'll let like cast members ride like haunted mansion and all these rides with all the lights on so that you can see like the, what it looks like it's really cool that's dope um <laughs> So, so I, I learned that there was a, uh, I learned that there was a camp that you went to as a kid and yes. that there was a conversation that stuck out to you, that there was somebody there that kind of looked at you and said, you got it in you. And you were fortunate enough to go back and help and volunteer, which is probably like a whole full circle thing. But why does that one conversation stick out to you? Um, I think it was just because I was so different and scared of being who I am and all this stuff as a kid. And I can remember getting made fun of a little bit, like, I remember like I would sing along to the radio because like I knew every song on the radio and like there was like a song I think it was like This Kiss by Faith Hill or something obviously that's like a very girly song or whatever but I like knew every word and these boys would like make fun of me and be like oh you know like why are you like that song and I'm like it's a good song um which I still stand by by the way um but yeah I just remember you know someone there like one of the counselors or whatever kind of took me under her wing and was just like hey like don't let them get hurt your feelings like you're awesome and I was just like yeah I am <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. me feel good <laughs> like I'm like I know but <laughs> um I don't know yeah I, I remember that very and then I don't know it's just like anytime someone takes you under their wing like that it feels good you know what I mean and you're just like I'm special you know <laughs> no definitely and I feel like every every kid needs to have that one person to definitely tell them you know yeah. even even me I, I i was bullied just because of the clothes that i wore and then mm. you know that just makes you not want to go to school but you got that one person to kind of motivate you like hey you're, you're you know there's a reason why they're picking on you that you know because yeah. you're just different but and i i grew up to say like if they're laughing because i'm different i'm laughing because they're all the same period 
Yeah. Period. <laughs> hit, me, hit me again with that. Hit me again with that. Period. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so in 2018, you decided to send in a uh, audition tape for Survivor. And I found oh out God. that you are a huge, huge um, fan of Survivor to the point that you would skip recess to talk to your kindergarten <laughs> teacher about Survivor. Um, <laughs> what What is it about that show? <laughs> I watched the first season and that was it for me. Oh, throwback, Borneo, classic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's very vintage of you. I love that show. I think it was just like, this is so funny. Did you watch my audition tape, by the way? I watched your audition tape. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what was it? The, the, three, <laughs> the three words to describe you is gifted, guarded, and gorgeous. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, Jeff Probst, can you call me? That should be the next show I do, a Survivor. I don't know. but um... You should do Survivor. And you know what? <laughs> and now that, that's what my question was. <laughs> you have a wall full of vinyls. At least you did in that, in that um, audition tape. Yes. You can only take one of those vinyls to that island with you. Oh, I, saw, I saw Dolly Parton. I saw Amy Winehouse and Lauren Hill, which is why I referenced <laughs> them. But I, yeah. I know you have some other ones up there. Mm -hmm. It looks like you had like 12. I, I did. I, I had like Solange up there, which is like a newer one. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a bunch of them. They're all here with me. I travel with them too. And I I live in Nashville now. I was living in Kentucky then. But I guess if I had to pick one, it might be Carol King Tapestry or Ziggy Stardust by David nice, Bowie because that's nice. just like a journey and that's like a climactic movie in my head when I listen to that whole record. So, so I mean, <laughs> uh, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, Zach Day is a is a is a very fierce diva. In Can you way. survive? Can you survive <laughs> on that island? You know, I'm gonna have to say that people would underestimate me, but I am <laughs> really strong, and I grew up on a farm, and I that's know true. You how did. to be resourceful and like <laughs> I was a hippie for years. Y'all don't understand. Like I have gone for at least a week without a shower before, just getting in the lake that would be my shower. So what know, was, but... uh, what was the, what was the morning life like on the farm? Was it the <laughs> oh my picking God. up the eggs and moving the hay and moving See, the cows is... over or something? Yes. Yes. I had a lot of that growing up. Like I would, I did a lot of going and gathering eggs every mm -hmm. day it was very something that I would do. And yeah, I've like slung hay into barns before many a times. Okay. But it was like pulling teeth because I was like, mom, I just want to watch The Simple Life. And she's like, you're not Paris the Hilton. Simple. And I'm like, I kind of am. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it was, it was hard for me, but I did it and I know what I'm doing and I'm strong. <laughs> you're like a strong, you're like a strong farm boy who watches America's Next Top Model. Exactly. I am like, <laughs> I always say like in my music and everything, I'm just like, if Justin Timberlake and Joni Mitchell had a baby that grew up watching The Simple Life, that's, <laughs> that's me. And um, I stand by that. But yeah, oh, yeah. I, think I, would, I think I would kill on Survivor because I think that um, the girls would love me because I really get along with girls, but the guys would like me too. I could connect with any of them. And then I would get underestimated, but I would kick ass in the challenges. And I have a lot of endurance. I used to run a lot. Like I was like- I was going to say those endurance challenges and... are more mental than anything. Yeah, like when they is. were standing there and there was like a stake in front of them. And yes, like, yes. you know, I, I you only watched the first there. season- the first season, I can only think of uh, the guy who won. Rich. Like, he went out and he, like, fished with spears. Mm -hmm. and Naked, then, um, often. Ah, that's right. He was a nudist, right? <laughs> and then Sometimes. that one it was, like, in the finale where it was, like, a rat speech or Rats something. Rats and snakes. Oh, Rats my God. And snakes, Classic moment. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that is the culture that raised me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You know, um, he's one of the first gay people that I ever saw on TV. And I think about that too, is like seeing like different, like people, like queer people and stuff on TV. I never saw it that much in like movies and stuff. I remember like Rich from Survivor, um, probably like the movie version of Rent, like the musical, there was like gay people in that. And I was just like, what is this, you know? And just like different things like that. Top model, there was like a lesbian on there or something. And I was just like, wow, this is- Did that, did that help with representation and, and- Yeah, totally. That's why representation is so important. I mean, we say it all the time, representation matters and it's true. You wanna see someone that looks like you or sounds like you or can be like a version of yourself on TV so that you can relate to them and be like, I can do this too. 
you know, a gay guy won the first season of Survivor. I mean, he's kind of problematic. Like he went to jail for um, tax evasion, but I love him still. He's a genius player. Well, I mean, the fr- <laughs> the French winner, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Okay, yeah. And well, yeah, just, who wouldn't who wouldn't evade some taxes when you win a million dollars? <laughs> yeah, I don't really know the whole story about it. I'm like, don't right, come right. for me, but um, <laughs> I'm a fan. But um, it's it's a uh, it's just like that's just something that you don't you wouldn't really expect that. I don't think you know. And well, I will put in my, I will I will be the first to sign the petition to get Zach Day on Survivor. I'm a little scared to go. I mean, I think that I would kill and I want to play so bad, but I'm so nervous that I it would like kind of. I would I wouldn't want it to put a damper on my music career. You know what I mean? Like I'm really wanting to be a musician. And sometimes if you become like a reality TV star, it makes it look like you're a real reality TV star trying to do music rather than yeah. a musician just trying to get bigger plans. Just having I, fun I, I, or whatever. Totally yeah, understand. like I would do it for fun as opposed to like trying to get famous or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, but so I saw that um on, on your video, I think it was like the 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 road to Hollywood collage thing is you saw that you were doing gymnastics and tap dancing uh as a kid so did you (laughs) multifaceted you are just you are just a a jack of all trades but what were your biggest takeaways from those experiences that helped you now in the entertainment business well I think it's been I mean yeah jack of all trades maybe master of none I don't know but I you know I like to say that I'm you know I've got I've dipped my toe in everything right I really have and that's just that's only helped me in life you know I can talk to anybody about anything if you've done it I've probably done it too and I can relate you know what I mean like um but when it comes like music and stuff yeah I mean like dance and clogging I was Kentucky State champion clogger and I'm sorry what is clogging oh clogging it's like tap dance but make it redneck uh redneck tap dancing yeah it's like a like a hootin nanny slinging yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Is that what yeah, they call it? A hoot nanny or, or uh, what was it? Uh, maybe, what was... Like a, maybe like a square dance more. Vibe, okay. Gotcha. But, gotcha. But it's like, there's a lot of technique involved in this. Um, and there's like people who are professional cloggers. You were a state champion. Kentucky state champion at the age of like six. Yeah. I killed. Um, not to I toot your own horn, right? Up, but a beep, but... beep. <laughs> I was like, yeah, not to toot my own horn, but choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> could i do it now no way i was just having fun but it just helps with rhythm it helped me with like get, garnering a little bit of stage presence you know being able to perform in front of people and i would like i think we did like um do you love me do oh do you love me? we did that song and that song reminds me of a uh, beethoven was it beethoven oh the, movie? the dog movie the dog movie yeah. Classic, yeah i think uh the dad danced with the mom and <laughs> beautiful movies. song beautiful movie um but yeah we used to sing we used to clog to that and i would like i had like a leather jacket and like glasses and i would do the beginning monologue you broke my heart because oh yeah I yeah remember i remember all that, of that yeah and um i don't know it just it, i was just a ham i just had to be on the you just love the spotlight yeah <laughs> that's fine hey so um so now uh to the the reason i became a fan was uh your voice audition so, you know, there obviously, you know, it's a TV show. So there are auditions upon auditions to yeah. get that audition. But what was it like up there? And I know it sounds like an elementary question, but, you know, singing to somebody's back, just is it, I mean, do, how do you approach that? Is it like, I want to be myself and just sing this song? Or is it, well, damn, I need somebody to turn around. So what kind of, what is that an added layer of pressure that you need to, yeah. Sometimes people go up there and they're just great singers, but mm-hmm. you're waiting for them to go off to make somebody turn or like for me, I, I mean, you say you don't watch it. I watch it about once a month and okay. it's already garnered about 2.5 million views on your oh. audition. Yes. Hey, let's toot the, let's keep tuning the horn, Zach. Come on. Shoot so um, <laughs> I feel like there was uh, the word thoughts in the bridge that goes to the chorus you oh. did you did this shit like with your voice and i think that's what made john legend turn around okay. and when you hit your height when you hit your high note that's what made kelly turn around oh, yeah. and realize you were white but what what kind of added layer of pressure is that to make them want to turn around it 
really impacted the whole process for me because it's such a long process before you get there. And like, I don't know if I'm still in like an NDA, so I can't say too much about it, but um, it's like, there's just a lot that goes into it. And I like initially auditioned playing that song week, but playing it on my guitar and doing like my own version of it. And then what you saw was me just performing with the band. Um, but they played my arrangement. Like they learned the way that I played it and it was really great and I loved it. But like part of my decision to not play my guitar was because I was like, okay, they can't see it anyway. Like their backs are turned. I just want to be able to focus on my voice and really Mm -hmm. have them um, just give them the best vocals that I got so that they can turn around for me. And um, I think that it paid off for that audition anyway. But then I just think that like the show and the coaches really didn't get the chance to see what I can do. And like my, they really didn't get to see like me pick up my guitar and play like a Sheryl Crow song or like a Joni Mitchell song or something, you know what I mean? Which is like more of like what I would do or take a song like week and turn it into like how I would do it. You know what I mean? Um, So it kind of hindered me a little bit, but I got on a team and I got the, you know, I got to do the show. So whatever. (laughs) Were you already thinking of uh, working with John Legend um, before you got up there? Well, like I told you, um, I was always like, I'm going to be on Gwen's team, you know, Mm -hmm. she was like my first concert that I went to and all this stuff. And I wanted to be on her team. And then they told me like halfway through the process that like, she wasn't going to be there and it was going to be Nick. And I was like, oh, hey, I was like, well, he's cute and everything, but John is definitely my second pick, you know? (laughs) Gotcha. And so then from there on out, it was like, I would be, but honestly, I didn't care. I would be honored with any of them one no, no, of, of them turned would have been great for me like i don't care <laughs> but, and what does that do? what does that do when you're in the middle of this song you know and you're performing a song but then boom and they're turning around yeah what did that mess with you or at the moment or did that mess oh, with your I psyche was like it was a sigh of relief because i was like oh god oh god and also i think they cut this out too but at the beginning of my audition okay i'll tell a little bit about this i hope i don't get in trouble for this but like they're like zach like you're going to go out there and we're just going to say like um, the next contestant is entering the stage. We're not going to say your name, your age, if you're a boy or a girl, like they don't want to know anything like that. They Mm -hmm. just want it to be like that. So, and they're like, and the crowd is going to be dead silent. So like, don't let that freak you out. Okay, here you go. And I'm like, um, okay. And I have like, so they're directing the crowd to kind of be quiet. They want the crowd to be quiet so that they can set, you know, and I guess it's like a reset thing or something. I don't know. And then you're on stage and it's just quiet and so of course I have to like break that tension immediately and I just start jumping up and down and spin and like trying to shake the nerves out and then the crowd started laughing and I heard Kelly say something like okay so we got like a prankster on our hands or something like that but that like really honestly broke that tension and made me feel like okay I'm good I'm good and I like and then I sang and then whenever John turned I was like okay I got someone to turn relatively early in the song like 15 seconds into the song no it was, was like, really early it's because yeah. of that damn note you did that like <laughs> I, I, remember I remember that <laughs> but I was just like okay and then so from that point on I was like okay I'm good I got somebody to turn I'm good so then after the whole thing and after the interaction I'm like walking off the stage and I remember this so well but I I, I was so excited to do and I'm like walking and then all of a sudden I get backstage and I felt like I had been hit by a truck or something. My stomach cramped. I felt like someone stabbed me. I don't really, it was crazy. I was like, oh, and I like double over in pain. I almost like throw up everywhere. And I was like, oh my God. Like, and the producers and everybody was like, um, are you okay? And I was like, no. And I had to like sit down and everything. Still don't know what that was. I think it was just like all that anxiety and mm-hmm. all that like tension from like the months of like everything leading up to that. And then it just being over. And I was just like, wow. And then and then I just like slept for like an hour. It was it was insane, but that pain was crazy. It's like so, it's so really are, like I went you, through something traumatic. Are you are you like in a is is that the correct setting when they show Carson Daly talking to the upcoming people who are auditioning? Are you just pretty much just sitting around waiting for your call and yeah, basically. I mean, he I think like so they did a lot of stuff with like my mom and my best friend that came mm-hmm. up. They like interviewed them and I wasn't even there. I was like backstage like doing stuff, getting ready. Like they hold us separately. So I didn't even and then they did like an interview which they didn't air of like my mom and I was there. And so like that was like the first time I ever heard my mom talk about me being gay and stuff. Oh wow. They asked about that. 
No she disrespect, didn't... but that would have been good TV to put. I like... know. And she was crying and everything. And I was like, <laughs> but no i was like this is so crazy to um, be witnessing this right now but it would have been but um so like that was like yeah it was just a lot it was a long day a long day of interviews long and just day. like preparing for that but um there's just so much that like y'all don't even see like they had me way toward the back end of the um audition process uh because i think there's just like ways that they want to no no of course you know no, what i'm saying I, I get it yeah so like it, it's a tv show after all yeah i yeah, mean yeah. they're still producing a television show i mean when you talked about the uh the crowd being quiet it reminded me of sometimes when the the stage is completely dark and yes. you can't see who's who's uh singing because yeah. maybe it's such a distinctive voice that they want to play with our mind or something mm -hmm. and not until somebody turns around and that's exactly what happened to you not until yeah. somebody turns around we saw you i know and i remember looking at him like oh that's some that is white soul <laughs> like holy crap who's that guy and yeah. like kelly's reaction was perfect and yeah. um man you were just doing it I, I can't tell you enough man like i'm such a fan of your performance on that song Thank you. and um so my question when you talk to, did it after me too I think yeah someone. there was another guy that did it he was more 90s r&b and he was like okay. this very handsome tall black man and uh -huh. he did it very well but um oh, i haven't even seen it yet but i i want to because, i'll send like, you the link i'll send okay. you the link i don't okay. i don't know if you're going to be comparing yourself but we watch, <laughs> i will <laughs> we watch <laughs> those two all the time oh um, that. <laughs> no but uh so when you talk about your arrangement my fascination always with with covers and, you know, you have a YouTube channel where you do a bunch of covers. And I think it goes back like 10 years or something. Yeah. But um, how do you decide what note to change? Like, I always like when you're hearing somebody do covers and they do it well, you're like, oh, shit, like that note was cool. Mm -hmm. How do you know which note to change? How do you know where to make it your own? If that makes um... if, if, if you can even explain that. <laughs> I know that's a whole different world and a whole different like no i think it's just like well like you said i've been doing that for so long since i was since i first learned to play guitar like i think some of the first songs i ever learned was like kiss me by six pence none the richer and that's like a very distinctive like guitar part and um vocal melody but like there's just i was always just like i want to do whatever i can to kind of change it because i don't want it to sound just like the track you know what i mean like i want to do something different mm -hmm. and so I don't know. I just would like work on it and just come up with different, different places that I could maybe change a note or change a, change the way it's sung or change a chord even. And then that's how I've always done it. I don't know. And then I'm like, that sounds like if Zach Day were to sing SWV, this is what it would sound like, you know? No, oh, hell yeah. And I, I applaud you for that, for that yeah. choice because it's, it's such a good song. And oh, now yeah. I want to say, I may be wrong, but I want to say social media wise, it's because of you. Thank you. <laughs> it is because of your performance of that song and your audition. There was that gentleman that did it the next year and he did yeah. great. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I think there was like a battle round where a, a young lady did it and she was awesome. Also. Wait, really? Oh my God. I'm going to send you this stuff. Don't worry. We're new. Okay. We're best friends now. Like, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll send you all this stuff. <laughs> Please. Um, so, and then there was like a TikTok trend where all these amazing singers and I want to say, I'm like, this is because of that guy, that the hippie long haired guy <laughs> yeah. on, on that season of The Voice. And now it's so cool to talk to you. I, I can't tell you enough. I, I've been a fan um, oh, thank and you. we've always been watching your stuff. Hey, yeah, so on that audition, when you say that when John turned around mm -hmm. and, and um, you felt more relaxed, there's a shot of Kelly Clarkson like cheering you on before she turns around. And if you look at you in the background, you're just like waving your arms and you're <laughs> like in your own head. Uh, and um, so after that, was it so much more relaxed to the fact that maybe you weren't even, you were in your own world now? I was, I, I was like, I'm good. Like I got somebody to turn around. I've officially made it on a team. And then I was like, it'd be cool if the other ones turned. But like I said, I knew that there was like, there was, I was like, the teams were like, well, some of the teams were full some of the teams were like one chair left or something gotcha. you know um so I was just like as long as I got somebody I'm cool and I knew that John had been holding out like from what I had heard from my friends and stuff like John had been like really picky and so when he turned for me I was like oh yes he wants me <laughs> and then um so I was good 
but um, I wasn't in my, I wasn't like, I wasn't like I could just quit right there. I was like, I'm going to finish the song and I want to be strong and I want to have a viral yeah. moment. Like that's really now, like looking back, that's like what this is all about. Right. It's like, it's a show and everything. But the reason any of this even is happening is because they want to have like a viral video. Oh no, yeah. That, YouTube. that YouTube that everybody's going to search. Yeah. Um, much like yours. I can think of uh way McDonald. I think her name was like, she was like okay. 15 and she had this, she she did uh feeling good yeah but it's another video i'm gonna send you because i'm gonna okay. send you a ton of shit um <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but she was just insane and then she started speaking and she sounded like a, a cute little mouse like yeah, it, was, yeah. it was just crazy um <laughs> so you go but, on um, to do the uh the battle rounds and yes, you did a door triggered yeah are you i'm sorry <laughs> but hey you you guys did great Thank so you. now in in that in that setting is it um in that setting, the mindset going in, is that we're going to do a duet and we're going to kill it? Or is it like, I got to sing better than this guy? It's a little both, I think. I, it was so crazy. Like, I was hoping that they would pair me with Zan, who's like my bestie of the season. And she was also on Team Legend. And I was like, we're going to get paired together because we have similar styles. And I was like, we can get paired together and we're going to slay and then we're both going to make it. Like, we'll both make it. One of us will Somebody's going to get stolen or somebody's going to get saved. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we were really thinking that was going to happen, but then it didn't. They paired me with Mike and I was, I'd never heard Mike sing at all. And then they like showed us all um, the blind auditions or whatever. So I got to hear Mike and he, <laughs> and I saw him get like a four chair turn and he like killed it. And I was just like, oh god they're gonna put me with mike come on like and he's like a true blue like r&b singer like to his core that is him he's great yeah. he's such yeah. a good singer um and performer but i was just like well i'm gonna lose <laughs> um and that's okay but i knew i knew i was really defeated probably like as soon as i found out we were together just because i was like okay now how can I win this? Like, I just don't know how I, how it's possible for me to win this. I was like, we could both get saved. There, there is that potential, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to win. And then when they said it was adorned by Miguel, I was like, okay, now if you let me play my guitar and do like adorn and play it and do like my version of it, it's going to be great. But mm -hmm. like, if you're going to have me sing to like, just adorn the track fast, upbeat, sexy, I was like, okay I'll do it but I was I just was worried but then um basically me and him came up with our arrangement the first night that we got the song we did it we were like this is good I think we sound great and we like showed John and he was like it sounds great like he really didn't have much like he was just like sounds really good love what you guys came up with like some of the other pairings he would um kind of go in and help them arrange these versions and like come up with different harmonies and stuff with you guys he had no notes but for us he was well not on like the arrangement or anything he was mm -hmm. just like yeah, love yeah. that love love all of this the runs are clean everything sounds good um yeah basically so then i was like mm, damn it because i was like i really need you to tell me what i have to do what i need to do so i can win gotcha. <laughs> like you got to tell me something and um in our rehearsals he was like he was like, Zach, you're doing good. And I was like, <laughs> thank you, King. I love you. And like, I was like excited to be singing for him. And he was very complimentary. But I was just like, I think I'm, unless he, unless Mike like really like messes up, I'm, I'm just going to probably lose. Because he just had something. He loved Mike. And Mike plays keys. And I think that he was really oh, into yeah. that or something. I, see I don't it. know. Um, yeah. But yeah, hey, it was for what it's worth. It was a great performance. Was I was just, okay. I was just always wondering. I was like, man, when they do those battle rounds, I wonder if they feel like I need to compete with this guy, or like where it's a collaborative effort. Well, the show and like everyone behind the scenes really doesn't want you to feel like it's a competition like that. They they kind of encourage you to look at it like, hey, this is a duet. This is a moment for mm. you guys to both shine. And like, we don't want you to think of it as like you have to one up the other person or anything like that. And like you if you go into it with that mindset you're going to be screwed because it's just not healthy and you're going to be worried and stuff the whole time like you really do so like yeah we just we wanted to sound good as a as a pairing we right. really did and like we did we sounded good i i think that um it just wasn't 
it wasn't my style and it sucks that I had to go up and do like an R&B song I don't even really consider myself an R&B singer but yeah, what it is, what it is. I, I so it. <laughs> so um now when you when you're in that <clears throat> setting, you know, c- pretty much competing against somebody else. Yeah. Would you rather? Would you rather get a song where you feel is easy, or would you rather be challenged by something that you might not be, uh, yeah. you know, used to? I love a challenge. I'm always down for a challenge. I love t- like I love taking a song and doing it my way. You know what I mean? I'm like that was a that was definitely a challenge for me um so I, I would prefer a challenge but then I see like some of my friends like um this one pairing got like how will I know by Whitney Houston and um they like I think it was how will I know um, anyway they like slowed it down and did like this really beautiful like ballad rendition of it and I was like why couldn't we have done something oh like that? you want something stripped down <laughs> like yeah maybe yeah just definitely just something like to where I could really show off um mm-hmm. I don't know I guess you just got to work with what you got and that's what I got and I was like okay I'm gonna do it to the best of my abilities I was really nervous and I was kind of defeated but I was like I could get saved I could get saved but I didn't mm-hmm. and then like also a lot of the saves and steals and stuff were already used by the time um me and Mike went to gotcha so I think so, there was yeah so even though it's just a couple performances I like my girlfriend told me to ask you how fun was the wardrobe uh, department that was so fun I do they that. do they sit down with each uh each singer and try to dress them as their personality that's what i'm seeing yeah um they really work one-on-one with you they so that's the thing about the voice and my experience with them was that it was really cool like they really want to make you feel special and make you feel like an artist and you are you know what I mean and so like they, they they really want to like um have you portray who you are so like yeah they work with you like you bring your own clothes and then they'll help you like pick stuff out and help you like from your own wardrobe that like really like um represents you but then they also have like oh my god they have this huge trailer full of just like anything and they're like go go Zach pick out a few things that you like and I'm just like oh my god and then like I just like picked out like all this different stuff and then they help you really come up with something that um, the network will approve of and it will look good on tv well it wasn't it wasn't the end there you continue to do music you continue to do gigs um but you know last year it was a challenging uh year for everybody yeah everybody uh the restaurant business the entertainment business my buddy who's a musician can't you know, he couldn't do shows, had to resort to like virtual shows, which is yeah. already just a difficult monster in itself. So yeah. what was it like for you, you know, in your experience being in the music industry uh, during the pandemic? It was a mess. <laughs> it was insane. Because uh, like I got a lim- I said, OK, this is kind of a crazy story, too. But like I was finishing up college like I I was in my last semester of school while I was like filming the voice and I had to like graduate from my degree early so that I could film the voice. And gotcha. then I'm, I, when I got eliminated from the voice before anything even aired, I moved to Nashville like two weeks after that. And, um, and then, so here I was in Nashville watching myself on TV and stuff. And then like two weeks later, COVID happens and everything shuts down and I was on the biggest high of my life. I, I have got my degree now. I just got back from working with John Legend in LA like several times. I had like stuff booked. I was like, I just had all these crazy opportunities lined up in LA, San Francisco. Me and Thunderstorm, he was also on my season. Of oh, that, that um, kid's great. That's my buddy. Um, we had a sold out show in San Francisco that we had to like refund. And I was, I had my flights booked, all this crazy stuff, you know, of course. And um, it all got canceled. So then I was like, oh my God, I am depressed. And I was like, I'm here in Nashville by myself. I don't know anybody and I have no uh, gigs lined up and I'm running low on money because I was just living off the money that I made from being on the show. Like my per diem that I would pocket, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like they would give you like a food stipend and instead of spending it on food, I would save it because I was moving to Nashville and I wanted to just, you know, whatever. So I was running out of that stuff and it was just really sad. I was like, what am I going to do? So I ended up having to get a job at Starbucks for like 
half of the pandemic. Um, and it was just like, I was watching myself get eliminated on TV, like working with John Legend that day before. And then the next day I'm like waking up at 4 a.m. at Starbucks, like, what can I get to you? You know what I mean? But you know what? That's part of the hustle. And that is just like what you have to do sometimes. And I was just like, yeah, but I'm here. And then like not long after that, I got put up in this apartment that I'm living in now. Mm -hmm. Um, They reached out to me, saw me on The Voice, and they were like, we want Instagram influencers that (laughs) um, live in Nashville to come live in this apartment and we'll pay your rent for a year. And you just have to post about us on Instagram and sing and do what you do and just like promote it as being like a part of uh, the living community here. And I was like, this is too good to be true. What the hell? So yeah, so they got like applications. My... It's over now. It's, it's over. over. Now. Oh, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it was. A, it was just like they were a brand new um, building, and they were just trying it for a year. They had four of us. Um, yeah, and we all four, four were neighbors. We lived here, and it was amazing. I mean, so they kept me booked. It was like I didn't have to do Starbucks anymore. I could live here in this beautiful apartment. And they would book me to play gigs in the building. They would book me to do the virtual stuff and Mm -hmm. keep me really busy, keep me making music. I would do windowsill Wednesdays for their channel and just like set up my whole vibe and just play and do full shows and everything. It was just, it was a blessing for sure. That's Um, awesome. And now things are really picking up, thank God. Cause I was like, I don't know if I want to be in Nashville anymore. Cause it was just like, why am I here? Like, I'm not doing, I'm not getting booked or anything, but now thank God things are finally picking up and I'm going to be busy. <laughs> That's good, man. I'm, I'm yeah. happy for you. So, uh, you know, not as we move on, I feel like the days of the street performer may be like dwindling, you know, and, and yeah. So sometimes yeah. you'd, you'd stand outside of a record label and try to get a yeah. deal or you, you, you'd hope that, certain powerful people are going to your gig now with social media and you can just immediately post a 30 second video yourself singing a certain riff or a certain song you know it gets in the right hands or it goes viral you know it can definitely traject uh, a career upwards so now with social media how how much more easy is it to be noticed or to 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 get that that spotlight I think it is easier, but I think that it is also a lot of luck that comes into it because, um, I mean, dude, it's all a joke in a lot of ways. Like there are people that are so good and like friends of mine that I know here and just everywhere that are just like the best singers and stuff that you've ever heard that maybe have like nothing, you know, nothing on Instagram, you know, like no followers or anything like that. Yeah, sure. And it's not for lack of trying. And like, there was, there was so many times that I would just get so frustrated because I would spend all day making like a really good video, like editing it and like just doing all this like hard work and it would get like nothing, like 30 views or something. And I would be like, why am I doing this? And that can be really just disheartening too. But if you can't look at it like that, you can't look at it like, okay, this one's going to go viral because like, I'll be on TikTok. I'll, I'll still do that. I'll, t- I'll spend all day making like a really good video and it'll get nothing. And then I'll, I'll do something in one take and it'll get like 50,000 likes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you just don't know. You just never know what's going to pop off, what people are going to want to hear. And I think that, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely had some cool opportunities come from social media, such as like getting to live here for free and like getting to, I mean, I had like Megan Trainer, Charlie Puth, like all of pentatonics like half of them um like all these people just like commenting on my tiktoks and stuff and i'm just was, like oh you had uh, sanjaya duet your tiktok sanjaya <laughs> <laughs> you all know i'm a child of reality tv when he did when you said I was like, that this is the weirdest sentence you've ever uttered <laughs> sanjaya did a duet on my tiktok <laughs> yeah. i was like that's one of the craziest things i've ever said but uh yeah what do you guys think about that like say that to me 10 years ago none of it's gonna make sense (laughs) exactly so now with streaming services and spotify and apple music and even youtube the business model has changed even from the past five ten years what do you think we're gonna be five ten years from now i mean back then it was like you get this much for each cd but now cds are so obsolete Mm mm-hmm 
oh my god i have no idea i wonder if tiktok will still be around i doubt it like if it's anything like vine because i actually did vine too like way back in the day and that's how i got a lot of people saw uh, me on the vine. kids vines yeah kids don't know about vines <laughs> yeah vine is like what's that like tiktok is the new vine in a way was it like eight seconds or fit what six. is it six second videos six. A platform so I'd be on like, of six. i would do like yeah. a run <laughs> like, <laughs> go. like i gotta it's out it's in out here. yeah <laughs> but i made a lot of really cool friends on there um that i still keep up with to this day that is just like wild but um yeah I don't know. It's it's so interesting. I, I wonder if TikTok will still be around. Do you think it probably won't? I, right. T- I feel I feel TikTok is a very powerful tool. It I think is. I think I think it's definitely going to evolve to a point where it's not as free as it is now. And I'm not mm. I'm not speaking monetarily. I just mean the content. Mm. Um, they're probably going to put a lot of restrictions on things. But oh, you know, um, funny. but yeah, yeah, like your social media has gotten you so many avenues of you know possible revenue and exposure and stuff Mm -hmm. but it did get you something very interesting that i want to address and you don't have to go into detail if you don't want Uh to but because you are zach day and because you're saying week on sw and by swv you got a message from a snl cast member on grinder and yeah uh Mm -hmm. uh-huh don't 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 run away (laughs) don't run away I can't talk about that. <laughs> I know you can't talk about that, but when you opened your phone and you saw that, you 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 don't have to say who it is. You don't have to say what the oh message consisted goodness. of. Yeah. But I need to know your reaction to that <laughs> message coming out. Oh my god, that is so funny! Wow, I'm so embarrassed. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, hey, <laughs> it's like, oh. crazy. It is. It is wild. Whenever a little celeb pops in your dms every now and then but yeah <laughs> I, we don't we was, don't have to it's okay we don't have it to was before it was before they were a um a oh before cast oh, okay gotcha gotcha no 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 worries so um <laughs> when you mentioned that you did go to uh you know you got your degree in college you were working with um american sign language um yes what is it about uh, the deaf community that made you want to you know learn about that more and go into that world it was, uh, so I was doing music ed at like a different university for a couple of years and that was fun. But then I was like, I just don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to be a choir teacher. I want to be a rock star. So I need to like find a different <laughs> avenue for this. And so like, I just transferred schools and I was doing like undecided major for like a little while. And then I just like, one of my friends was taking sign language and like, was like, you need to come with me to this event. It's called Deaf Coffee. And I was like, okay because I'm going to go like, of course, I want to know what deaf coffee is. And so like we go and it's literally like no talking, just signing and tons of people. And I was like, Oh, I'm scared. I was scared because like people were trying to come up to me and communicate with me. And I didn't know any sign language yet. And I was just like, it's very reminiscent of the Spanish speaking um, (laughs) thing that happened to me. You're just not very well versed in other languages. Yeah. I'm just like, (laughs) I have nothing to say for once um but yeah and then I was like well that's inspiring though so like I started hanging out with these like different deaf people around uh, campus and just becoming really good friends with them and you just pick up the language like that and I was like okay I'm good at this I'll do this this will be my degree so then I would be like in class all day signing and like not using my voice at all and then like go play a gig at night and be like wow this is too did it allow you to rest your voice like for your performances my voice yeah but like the craziest thing is that your eyes get so tired and your brain it's like because you're having to like constantly like translate stuff all day and you're just taking in all this information and like all my teachers were like deaf and all my classes were in sign language and so I would just be like really focusing intensely on my eyes like all day and then like I would be like I am exhausted it's very exhausting i remember in, like, i had content. a <laughs> i had a couple regulars at a restaurant i used to work at and they were both deaf and i remember i just remember i'm sorry from sesame yes, Street. i remember sorry. that i'm sorry yeah so um i remember forgetting to put in their order and i felt like crap and i ran over and i just it just came out of nowhere i'm like hey i'm sorry i forgot to put in your order give me five minutes and i guess they, they read my lips they along with what, whatever yeah, i did yeah. and then they're like I'm like, holy shit, that worked. And then 
so we became cool they even got they were very sweet they got me a book on sign language on like how to learn so i would come back and try to converse with them and everything yeah and so the guy looked at me he goes hey and he did like a like he's playing pool yeah and i was like i'm not sure and he wrote it down he goes do you play pool i'm like oh yeah i play pool i would love to play pool he goes hey you you know and i was like yeah sure we'll play pool and then he gave me his number and then i i felt like an idiot because i sat there like <laughs> I'm, I'm like how how do i and then yeah. he looked at me he goes idiot text. <laughs> and i'm like oh shit like i felt right. terrible <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. but they were hilarious. They were funny That's as fun. hell. Yeah, it's a great I mean, I love the deaf community and it's a culture that I really hold close to my heart. And like I really have I mean, I don't know if I'll ever be an interpreter like I was set out to be before mm-hmm. I did the voice. I was going to be an interpreter. Um maybe someday, but um either either way, I like love the community and I learned so much. And it was just really cool to like have like your like role models and stuff be like like someone that you just like I never would have thought that I could communicate with deaf people or like have my role models be deaf people you know what I mean like they're just not but they but they are that's cool man I had teachers that I just like got so close to that you know are deaf and like there's just a part of me that's just like wow like maybe like a few years ago I'd have never even been able to have a conversation with this person and now they're like a role model to me it's really cool it's really cool that's dope man so um, uh, last year, coincidentally, on, on April Fool's Day, you put out a tweet saying that your love-hate relationship is the most toxic relationship. Uh, your love-hate relationship with music is your most toxic relationship. So now the existential question comes in. <laughs> do, you, do you still allow yourself to enjoy it rather than trying to make a successful business out of it, if, if that makes any sense? I still struggle with that. I mean, it's, it's hard. I just, does it become like, does it become like you're singing so much, you know, I don't, I don't want you to ever lose love of it. Right. But yeah. yeah. You know, when you're gigging all the time and maybe it's not happening or do you ever feel that way? Oh yeah. Like it just becomes a point where it's just like, Dan, like, what am I doing? Like I could have a career as an interpreter. I could have, um, I could probably be, there's just so many other things that I could be doing. Like, and I look around at like my family and friends and like the people that I grew up singing with and stuff who are like married, like settling down, like really starting to like kind of go into this next phase of their life as an adult and like um, figuring out that part of their selves. And I'm just still here, like trying to be a rock star. And I'm just like, okay, is this, it's just, when do I stop? You know, when do I need to like give it up? But um then there's like a part of me that's like, no, like, I know that I'm like, I know what I've got to offer. And I know that I will never be happy until I'm like, just making music full time, and just enjoying it and like getting paid. That's like, my three things make music full time, get paid for it and enjoy it. Like, I would love to do that. Um, So yeah, I mean, there are, I do get tired. And I like feel like sometimes when I'm writing songs and doing like, so myself, I'm just like, oh my God, like this again. And sometimes I feel like I'm telling the same stories in my songs and it's just sad, but it's like, it's just who I am. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so ever since I've been in Nashville, I've been trying to like meet different people and um, just continue to get inspired. And there's like a lot of talent here and I'm starting to like do some co-writing with people, which is like really nice. new for me. Um, I'm starting to try to find like that really good group of musicians here that I can connect with because that's what I need. I love having people to bounce ideas off of and collaborators and things like that. I really, really love that. That, That's what I grew up in, you know, that, that trio, that three part harmony. That's, that's my, that's who you are. You're just a survivor loving Kentucky farm boy. (laughs) Exactly. I need that community. (laughs) (laughs) You need that. Yeah. We we need to set up a fan club, (laughs) Kentucky farm boys who love survivor. Oh, and America's yeah. t- next time model. <laughs> yeah, my friend or my um my teacher used to say that my fan base was going to be called the Daydreamers. Isn't that cute? That's nice. That's adorable, Zach. Yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> like where are my hey, Daydreamers Zach. at? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna set up the Daydreamers. Um, Zach, it's been so cool to talk to you again. I Thanks. I can't tell you enough that I really we watched it yesterday, and I had to show <laughs> off to my daughter. I'm like, hey. 
talking to that guy tomorrow. She's yeah. like, are you serious? So if you wouldn't mind, just say hi to Estelle, my daughter, and Sasha, my girlfriend. Hello, Estelle. Hello, Sasha. Zach here from The Voice. Um, y'all need to become daydreamers because that's where it's at. Zach Day <laughs> represent. <laughs> um so uh before we uh before we let you go um right now in in youtube world it is the beginning of september so any uh new shows you got coming up um that people can see you at yes so september is going to be really busy for me but two of the biggest shows that i'm doing is uh I will be opening for Susie Jones here in Nashville at the High Watt. If you guys are on TikTok or Instagram, you've definitely seen her. She's amazing. We go way back. She asked me to open for her here in Nashville. So I'm super excited about that. I'm putting together a full band and I'm going to be debuting like three new songs that I've been writing and working on. So I'm super pumped about that. And then I'm also playing, that's September 3rd. And then on, uh, September 19th, I will be playing at Nashville Pride. And I'm like super pumped about that. It's like a huge opportunity for people to see me. So uh, come on out. So let's uh, let's do a round. Can we do some word association? <laughs> yeah, oh God. <laughs> awesome, come on. Let's, let's find out. John Legend. King. King. Blake Shelton. Tall. Nick Jonas. <laughs> Sexy. Kelly Clarkson. An angel. <laughs> uh Carson Daly. Who? Just kidding. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> I never who, really who, met him. <laughs> who is the unsung hero of the voice? What does in that the, even the, mean? <laughs> like in, in the 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 cast or the the production team or like who is the unsung hero? Who's that one person that you're like, man, this person really holds everything together? Oh my god. It's gonna be the PAs, literally, mm -hmm. like the production assistants. Love them. They were so amazing. They kept us like in check. They were always there. If you were nervous, they would come up to you and just really and they're me. I'm, I'm like friends with all of them on Facebook. Like they're great. They're great. I love them. Yeah. Uh best Disney movie. Oh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say Tangled. Yeah. Wow. Tangled. Dude. That's what came to my mind first. The uh in the music business with everybody you've worked with who is the best kept secret best kept secret well what y'all don't know is that like megan trainer is out here like writing songs for like everybody and is just like working her ass off and um we, we stand she's a legend <laughs> we stand <Yeah>. we stand <laughs> have no choice but to stand uh, I don't even use all that, all those words. It's so entertaining to hear somebody else say it. Zach, where can they find you on social media to become daydreamers? Okay, if y'all want to follow me on Instagram, it's at you know Zach, and then on TikTok, it's at you know Zach Music, and that's where I'm at. And then if you want to see all my crazy tweets that <laughs> you've been bringing up, that those are on Twitter at you know Zach. <laughs> they are just random thoughts. <laughs> And usually, yeah. like as an interviewer, like we do, I do my research, but I go through Twitter <laughs> because that's where you find out how the wheels turn. Yeah. You know what I mean, like you see the random thoughts come out. And I was like, did this guy just say grinder? Like, what the hell? Well, but, Twitter uh, is definitely my outlet for be my like me just like popping off because like Instagram, I'm always afraid people are going to unfollow me if I say something like that. But mm. Twitter, I don't care. So I'll yes, just... yes, that def Twitter <laughs> is definitely that seedy nightclub of social <laughs> oh, media. Where no, dream. there's no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> no, no, I love a seedy nightclub. Trust me, that's where I belong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go into that. Zach. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's behave. All right. Okay. Uh, Zach, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Consider me a daydreamer. Consider me. Uh, uh, set, let's set up your petition to get on Survivor. Uh, yes. I love you, buddy. It was. It was. A, it was a very so fun much time. Fun. Yeah, um, absolutely. You can find me at D. Uh, excuse me. You can find me at DNC Digital on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, gentlemen. If you have grown a beard since the pandemic, or if you got a beard, or if you want to make it look good, make sure you check out CanYouHandlebar.com. Use my promo code DNC Digital for fifteen percent off this is d for zach you guys make sure you have a good day and take care of yourselves